Welcome to American National Government Online Anytime, Section 1697. I am Jonathan Parker, and I'm glad you're here. We're going to learn a lot this semester. So, we got to get this, this lecture out of the way. I'm sorry about that, but we just got to do it. So, Online Anytime, uh, it's under syllabus, and I have a feeling I made a few mistakes. So... Uh, I'm going to download this, and uh, at the end, if there are mistakes, I will correct along the way, and we'll uh, get the corrected version re-uploaded. So, no pressure. On me or on you. So, again, you are in American National Government, online anytime with me. Jonathan Parker. Uh, first things first, contact information. Uh, this is, I don't know why this is a problem, but it is. Uh, my name is spelled correctly here. My name is spelled correctly there. My name spelled correctly uh, pretty much everywhere. I spelled correctly there, there. Uh, I don't know what happened uh, but when I was born, you know, back in 1590 or whatever. This was the standard spelling of Jonathan, but students have done this, students have done uh, this, you know, and then they've gotten very angry indeed that I have not responded to correspondence that I never received. So I don't know who the emails went to. So I don't know uh, you know, I, but, you know, make sure you spell my name correctly. Take the time needed to see, okay, I'm not sure how to spell Jonathan. Let's look the name up. Uh, my office is 216C on the East Peoria campus. I do share it with one other faculty member, although I don't know if I even share it. I've never seen him uh, in the room, so if you need help, please do not hesitate to stop by. I was about to say, please hesitate. Please do not hesitate to stop by during my office hours, and they are listed here. And other office hours will be held by appointment only. I am very much willing to hold extra office hours via Zoom or hold, you know, see you via Zoom during these times. Um, we just have to set it up. That, that would be uh, an email that would be initiated on your part. Uh, I'll send you an invite. We can have a meeting. I mean, even then, th at these times, th that's perfectly fine. Uh, please talk to me to coordinate a meeting. If you wish to exercise this option, I will accommodate you if we can find a mutually agreeable time to meet. I've, I've met students at 7, 8 o'clock at night over Zoom since the pandemic hit. This is not a big deal to me if it needs to happen this way. So, remember, teachers cannot read minds. I won't know that you are having difficulty unless you tell me. Please reach out if you need help. Uh, I am available by email. Otherwise, I will endeavor to get back to you within one business day of your inquiry. So, I get a lot of questions about what a business day is, so an email sent on Monday will be answered by Tuesday at the latest. An email sent on Friday, on the other hand, will be answered by the following Monday at the latest. Why? Saturday and Sunday are not business days. So I'll let you read the modality description, the course description, general information. I won't, we don't need to beat this into the ground. Uh, materials of instruction. The This is, was the bibliographic information that I was given. Uh, the bookstore has the correct book. This was a thing over the summer. The bookstore is handing out the right book. Okay, the bookstore has the right book. Uh, we used to have an online inclusive access sort of course. Uh, I could not get all my students access to the online book, so I finally talked the powers that be into doing something different, and this is what they came up with, They're just going back to hard copy. So um, 
get the book, there are some assignments that we're going to do out of the book, and it is expected that you read along uh, where applicable. And I will also provide virtual handouts, such as the Federalist Papers and Anti-Federalist Papers, Washington's Farewell Eisenhower's Farewell. In fact, these four are going to be assignments that you do and, uh, and submit to me. So, uh, assignment submissions, unless we use Flipgrid for an assignment, and this is Flipgrid. Flipgrid.com. I've already created our class, um, and I will put up an instruction video on how to get into Flipgrid. Uh, I've got that made from the summer semester, so that's uh, that'll be up very shortly. Where to go? Okay, everything you turn in must be a Microsoft Word doc that you attach to an email. I don't want, I know that the school gives you some sort of Microsoft Office suite thing. Don't do it. Just hit, hit download as a Word document, save it, and send it to me. Students all the time send it to me, and then I say, I can't get into this. I'm not an editor. Or there's some other thing that happens that I can't get in because some, I mean, I don't have access to it. So just, just, just Download, take the 10 seconds, download it, and attach it and send it. All right, academic citation. Whenever you turn in a written assignment, please cite it if you are using ideas and words that are not your own. If you direct, use a direct quote from a book, article, website, or you paraphrase a chunk of text, or you present a theory, argument, opinion that does not belong to you, it is appreciated. It's all right. It is required that you acknowledge other people's ideas, theories, or arguments. It takes time for all of us to develop our own original ideas. I'm in grad school right now. I'm working on a history certificate so I can teach history to you guys uh, when I'm finished. Um, do I have all my? Do I have a bunch of original ideas at the moment? I'm one class in. I'll start my second class on Labor Day. No. No, and that's okay. You know, that's part of learning. That's part of being a scholar of whatever subject. You are all political scientists because you're in this class. Um, no, I don't, you know, I don't have all the original ideas ever in a subject I'm learning about, and that's fine. I read a book. Okay, this is what so-and-so says. I say, this is what so-and-so says, and I agree with it because of X, Y, and Z. That's fine. It takes time to develop your original ideas. All right? Just as long as you give credit where credit is due, then there's no problem. Bibliography. So you're also required to have this. At the end of your written assignments, you are required to provide a list of sources that you have utilized for the assignment. We will use... That's wrong. The latest mistake one version of MLA format for bibliographies and inline citations for this class. I've taken the thinking out of it for you, too. Um, use the template in the following link to construct your bibliography. And there are a million websites to do this, so, I mean, you don't have to do this one. Easybib.com. That's just one that I found. Um, I mean, now you have to view an ad to get a citation for free. It still works. Uh, I mean, there shouldn't be an instance where you're using, like, you know, where you need, like, 12 citations in, in the online version of this class. Uh, so you're just going to click on Create Citations. It's very uh, intuitive. All right. So inline citations are also expected in any writing assignment that you turn in where you have used outside sources. If you don't know what an inline citation is, please visit the Writing Center. All right. Or Purdue Owl. That's another good source. Learn about it. You will need it, possibly. I mean, if you, I've known students who, who have gotten away with not citing anything for a semester and, and they've been in the right and that's been fine. But most of you will have to. General guidelines. So if you have any doubts about whether something needs to be cited, please just create a citation for it. 
please just do it. I have never, ever taken off points or done anything for too many citations. I just, you know, I'll just point it out and say, you didn't need that one. You didn't need that one. That's fine. That is never going to affect your grade. In fact, I, I appreciate that you've taken the time to do that and make sure that you're all right. All right, uh, next, this is a point of legitimate disagreement, but you're in my class, so this is the way it's going to be. Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Do not cite Wikipedia in any work that you do this semester. It will negatively impact your grade. Again, Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Again, this has been a point of disagreement most every time I bring it up, but it is not, and that's just the way it's going to be. It will negatively impact your grade if uh, Wikipedia appears as a source in anything you use. All right, next question is, well, Mr. Parker, how will it affect my grade negatively? And I, the answer is usually, yeah, do you really want to find out? Just don't do it. Don't do it. All right, academic misconduct, plagiarism, visit page 24 of the Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. You should have a copy of it kicking around somewhere. If not, it's available online on the ICC website. In sum, based on the severity of the offense, the instructor may recommend failure for an assignment or failure for the course. Multiple instances of academic misconduct could include sanctions up to dismissal from the college. Um, and this has been an issue every semester I have taught here. Uh, students seem to like testing me. And once I prove that I will do it, uh, the cheating usually, well, not usually, the cheating always stops. So I, I do this, you know. The first time I catch you plagiarizing, I will give you a zero for whatever assignment you have plagiarized without the opportunity to redo it. And that includes major writing assignments. The second time I catch you plagiarizing, I will fail you for the course. I'll just, I'll just fail you. That's the way it goes. I just kicked a chair. All right, we're all right. Uh, no exceptions to this will be made. Late submissions. As a rule, I do not accept late work. However, circumstances sometimes do occur that might prevent you from turning something in on time. That's fine. If a circumstance like an illness or death in the family does occur, Make sure you talk to me. Make sure that you approve of what you said happened, does it, and did indeed happen. And I feel like a jerk putting that in, but I've been taken advantage of uh, way too much for that. Another note, you are in one of my online classes. You are going to know when things are coming down the pipe uh, a long time before they're actually due. So if there's a test... And the day before it's due or, you know, 10 minutes before it's due, you tell me, hey, Mr. Parker, I've, uh, I, I just came down with COVID five minutes ago. I need an extension. This has happened. Um, or, you know, I've got hives and I, I can't, uh, I can't work or something like that. If there is, a, if you're asking me for, an extension or to turn something in late the day before because our week starts on Monday ends on Sunday so you'll have a weekly schedule and you'll know exactly what's coming down the pipe on Monday so you'll have Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday to do the work to do the assignments so you know a lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part you will not be getting an extension under those circumstances at all because you know you've had six days beforehand so if you're saving all your work to do you know from 11 to 11:59 on a sunday night I, I have no sympathy for that anymore and you can blame the summer folks uh, from last semester for that so standard grading scale 98 to 70 60 um the course is going to be primarily lecture-based via video uh, with a significant amount of asynchronous discussion and participation, again, via Flipgrid. Visual 
uh, I will incorporate PowerPoint presentations into my lectures and videos where appropriate, and I might change it up a bit depending upon how the class progresses. Uh, your grade, this is 80% of your grade. Uh, I'm not sure because we're, we're going through a whole assessment thing and a reaccreditation, or so I've heard. Uh, so we might have to do an essay. Uh, that'll be 100 points. Test 1, test 2 are 150 points. Quizzes, I'll give quizzes. And if you're watching this video, the quizzes are test questions uh, that are worded exactly as they will appear on the test and in the same order and then, you know, just a hint. Uh, Pre-test, that will be up. You'll get full credit just for attempting this. If you only know one answer, that's fine. The only way you're going to get a zero is if you don't take it. All right, so you'll get full credit if you just take this pre-test. The post-test, which is, uh, hint, hint, the pretest, just given to you at the end of the semester to see what you've learned. You're going to get whatever grade you earn. Uh, there will be a mini speech, Federalist paper assignments, book assignments. So get the book or find a friend that has a book or go halvesies on a book if your neighbor is in this class too. Um, classwork, homework as assigned. You can read H. Uh, you can read I. I tried to keep it as centered as possible. Some of it's left, some of it's right leaning. I mean, it's it's just the day and age we live in. So, I do not advise taking a test and then forgetting about the material. So I have arranged this course so that one topic builds on another. You're going to be hearing and dealing with everything we study throughout the semester, so keep your notes. It's not a case in this class where you take a test and then forget everything we talked about the last four or five weeks. You may see test questions from the first test on the final, especially, hint, hint, because I know a lot of students don't like to watch these videos, about the, uh, about the syllabus anyway. Federalism, that's a big important topic. Now where did I leave off? So notice, it is not the responsibility of the instructor to chase you down to make sure that you're keeping up with your work. If you miss a class, or if you miss a week, I'll just I'll reword this, if you miss, uh, Some time during the class, you must ask me or a classmate what, if anything, you missed. You're not probably even going to have to do that. You can look, just look at the schedule. If you choose not to do this, do not be surprised if you start seeing a lot of zeros on Canvas. Now, here's the thing. I've got about 100 of you, roughly, just at this school. I teach at Heartland, too. Um, I'm working my way through grad school. I've got a one-year-old. I've got a lot going on. So... If, you, if, if you're not doing your assignments, I, I'm, I'm not going to play mother and try to get you to do your work. All right. I, in all honesty, I'm probably not even going to notice until I go in and do the grading. Uh, so it, it's really on you. Exercise personal responsibility. Learn how to manage your time. I know that's tough. I, I still struggle with that uh, from, from time to time. But... It's just the reality of the situation. Attendance. So attendance is defined as completing homework assignments as well as logging on to Canvas. And I can't grade you, give you a grade for this, even though I would like to, but I can't because we are online anytime. Uh, so attendance is kept for... Uh, reporting purposes for when the college asks me to mark who the never attenders and non-attenders are. So the never attenders are people who never logged into class on day one through the end. Non-attenders are people who just give up maybe halfway through. So I'm going to look at your activity on Canvas. I'm going to look at Flipgrid. 
Uh, and I'll make a determination that way. So just log into class. The college handbook states that 5% of classes missed during the semester constitutes an excessive number of absences. That's one week. So, I mean, if you don't do anything for a week, uh, there's no way around it. You're probably, you're probably going to be dropped. So just stay active, and you're probably going to be fine. The takeaway, keep an open line of communication with me, and you're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. You will learn something from this class. You might even enjoy yourself. Stranger things have happened. Now here's the projected course schedule. I've tried to keep you and the in-person class on roughly the same schedule, although just because this is online anytime and they're in person, there, there are differences. Test 1, Thursday, September 15th through Tuesday, September 20th. Test 2, Thursday, November 4th through November 8th. Now, like you, you really have no excuse not to take or to tell me you forgot about test one and test two. You have it in the syllabus right there in writing. I haven't made up my mind on the final exam yet, yet. Uh, but you will know uh, probably within the next week or two. Uh, Labor Day, Election Day, this is a, another new holiday. Uh, Thanksgiving break, the last day of class is December 5th. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't expect you to work on holidays. Um, I try not to work on holidays when I can help it. Uh, but I know there are students who like to work ahead, so I always have the stuff up. You know, September 5th, I know that's, uh, I think that's a Monday. Yeah, and our week starts on Monday and ends on Sunday. So I'll have the stuff up on Labor Day. Uh, do I expect you to do any work? Do I expect you to log into Canvas? No, not at all. Uh, take the day. Guest lecture, I always try to bring in some guest speakers uh, who are learned people, learned practitioners in politics in one way or the other, in one way or another, some, some sort of way at the state or national level. I, I do have connections there. Um, I just want to point out, because I get accused of this quite often, that I'm trying to indoctrinate. The reason I bring in who I bring in is, one, they have something to teach you. They've been doing what they do for a long time. And two, they don't charge me. That's it. That is it. All right. I don't get a budget for this from the school. This is something extra that I try to do for you guys. Um, there is no ulterior motive, all right? I know Republicans, Libertarians, Democrats, Greens. They don't charge me, and they have something to teach you. So, that's that. The instructor reserves the right to add or subtract from any part of the syllabus as the semester progresses. He will make every attempt to notify the students of changes during regular class meetings. And we don't have regular class meetings. Through Canvas and or through email. And Canvas is, you know, they have the, the email option on Canvas, so I'm not... I'll get a hold of you if something happens. Um, then we get through planned assignments. And, and like I'm saying, I, I, I don't have a lot of sympathy for the night before, hey, uh, I need an extension because uh, whatever. You know when everything is coming down the pipe. I get, I literally, I give you everything pretty much in the syllabus. So there will be a mini-speech. You're going to post the speech to Flipgrid no later than Tuesday, October 18th at 1159. You will reply to three classmates' speeches, also on Flipgrid. Those responses are due a week later, October 25th at 1159. And you can read about this assignment and, uh, okay, how do I grade you? The rubric's literally right there. Did you deliver a three-minute speech? Yes. Now, I, you know... 
you know you have to deliver a three-minute speech if the speech that I see on Flipgrid clocks in at a minute 45, you're getting points taken off. I, I am a stickler about that. Was there evidence of some practice? Did you turn in a typed outline to my email? Did you turn in a bibliography uh, in the latest MLA format documenting your sources? Did you meaningfully respond to three of their classmates, to three of your classmates? Uh, and meaningfully means uh, something more than I agree or great job, dude, or something like that. All right, Federalist Papers. This is. <laughs> these are the papers that were written by some of the founders to support passage of the Constitution, you are just doing one assignment regarding the Federalist Papers. And I used to teach high school. I did high school for a semester, and then I swore never again. <laughs> uh, I made them read every one of them, uh, so I have softened considerably. So you're going to read these, and the link to get there is right here congress.gov slash resources then um, I'm going to scan these and put these up because the students sometimes struggle to find these and I don't blame you them. I don't blame you at all because I've, I've struggled to find them in the past but I have a book I bought I'll scan them in and, and have that for you summary paper of anti-federalist and these people didn't want the constitution the same papers and uh, Here's what you are filling out for the Federalist paper. Here's what you're filling out for the Anti-Federalist papers. Now keep in mind, uh, these are just for you. These are your notes, but I want on Flipgrid. Okay, number one, the paper was written by James Madison on September 1787 or whatever it was. The intended audience of the paper was the American people. Four of his big ideas were X, Y, Z, and A. And I'm looking for that for each paper. So number 10, number 47, was also written by James Madison in September of 1787, 49, 50, 51. So you're doing five of these worksheets and explaining what your findings are on Flipgrid. All right, and same thing for the anti-federalist papers. Then the book assignments, you're going to post all of them to Flipgrid. I'm going to give you up to 10 minutes. Now, that does not mean you have to use all 10 minutes. I'm just giving you up to 10 minutes. And again, um, for any of these assignments, I, I might ask to see your notes if I feel like you were just winging it on Flipgrid. So here, you know, Tuesday, August 30th. Read this, Tuesday, September 13th, Tuesday, October 11th, uh, and everything's due, on everything's due on Tuesday just to keep you uh, in line with the in-person class. Uh, you'll have plenty of time. You'll always have a week to do all this work. Um, so, yeah. I've gotten feedback in the past, oh, your syllabus is too confusing. Here is the calendar and due dates of all the planned assignments that we have for the semester. I think it's pretty clear. But that is what I have for you. So I will upload this uh, revised syllabus, and this will be what you're looking at when you're watching this video. So uh, I look forward to working with you guys. and. Uh, Let's see what happens over the next 16 weeks. Let's make it a good one and uh, reach out if you ever need help. Thanks. Bye.